Um, good evening, those who are present and those who are with us virtually. I want to thank God for this moment once again that we want to continue with our series on mental health. Thank you, brother, for the introduction and the welcome. I want to believe that if you started with us, at least you are somewhere. And at the end of the series, at least you'll be, very, you'll be able to know, at least you have something you can talk about mental health. If you can forget everything, at least remember that there's a mind. Hello, yes. At least remember that there's a mind. It's not a, a hoax. It is not a, a myth. It is real. And secondly, that, that mind, as much as you may not see it, you may not touch it, and you may not feel it, it is actually subject to illnesses. And yesterday, we were able to see and demonstrate the very close connection between the mind and the body. That when one is sick, the other one is likely to fail. I was discussing with my colleague afterwards, and she showed actually she was able to affirm that one time there was a research done with children, those who are born before, uh, you know, premature in a nursery, and they really wanted to see what are the factors that will contribute to weight gain. And it was very simple. They demonstrated that those children who did not have mothers, you know, they are somewhere abandoned, they actually gained weight poorly, and yet the nutrition, everything, all the other factors were constant, meaning that that absence of the, the mother, they even affected the units. That is how the mind is, even the one in, and the, the, the children who are very, very young. And therefore, I'm very excited that I'll be able, to, I've, been gotten a, I've gotten a forum where we need to share, emphasize the issues of the mind, so that, as I said, the three A's, that at least you are aware, you accept that these things are real, and that you can be able to take action for yourself, or for your friend, or your family member. Today, we are continuing, and I'm looking at uh, the, what are the types of illnesses, the disorders of the mind. Yes, I know our main focus is prevention, but you can only prevent what you already know that it is there. And that's why I say that at least if you don't go home with anything, home knowing that there's a mind, and the mind can be sick. So today we are looking at the types of mental disorders. Remember, we have said, I've not said diseases, I've talked about disorders. Sometimes we refer them as uh, uh, illnesses, but mostly disorders such that because even in the diagnosis, we use what we call syndromic approach, and therefore it's a combination of various signs and symptoms that will tell you that there is a problem and this problem is this. Looking at the slide, we have several, but allow me, I will run very fast, but I will take a little bit of time in the last one, the personality disorders. Therefore, I'm, I'm starting with the mood disorders and we have talked about this. The, those who are with me from the very beginning, we say that the mind is the one which controls our mood. And therefore, those moods can actually be sick. And when they are sick to the clinical level, when they are clinically significant, they become disorders. This is one of the groups of mental disorders that is very common. And I'm glad that at least people are comfortable saying, you know, I was diagnosed with depression, even if it is not depression, even if it is schizophrenia, somebody is comfortable talking about depression. It's coming out. It is less stigmatized because it is very common. So the, among the mood disorders, we have uh, diseases like the depression, which sometimes is referred as unipolar because it's just one side. Then the second one, which is a bipolar, where somebody swings between the high mood and low mood, that is the manic and the depressive. And uh, many of us are aware of this. You now they say so and so behaves like he's a bipolar. I don't, I don't know whether people know what that one means, but uh, uh, somehow it's something, it's a, it's a conversation many people are talking about, and indeed it's, it's fairly common. In the extreme uh, state of these mood disorders, uh, the people with mood disorders, especially in the manic phase, these are the people who are pressured of speech, they talk a lot, they are grandiose. 
And uh, the other things that we don't talk about, they are the people who will invest generously, and they are very generous. Somebody said, when he was in that manic state, and she was like, you know, God says we share. And therefore, she gave everything. All her, her children's clothes were given out. All her clothes were given out. She took loans and, uh, and bought so many things. Women groups were bought for land and everything. By the time she's coming out of that, she had actually used over eight million. So sometimes it can be very destructive and costly to the family. And therefore, it's important for us to note and know that there is help. I know many at times when somebody is in that state, they will always tell you they are not sick, you are the one who is sick. Unfortunately for this one, the lawyers are taken up and the, the lady was like, I think my husband is not fit enough for me, so I want to divorce. And the lawyers jumped in, not knowing the state of this person. By the time the face is over and you don't know now how to face your client, even though uh, it was really a client. Mood disorders. We have others like hypomanic. Those are uh, the classes within the mood disorders. I don't think I want to continue that, but then I say it is one of the commonest, especially depression, two types of depression, the primary and secondary. I think I've mentioned that primary depression is also referred as indigenous and it runs in families. Unfortunately, it is what contributes to some families being labeled as caste because you find that they commit suicide because of untreated primary uh, uh, depression that runs in that family. So when you see a family with some issues, it's not because they are cast, it's not because they are demon possessed, it's because they have that the depression that has not been uh, diagnosed and, and treated. Allow me to move to the next uh, group of uh, disorders. When you talk about anxiety disorder, it's not just one disorder, but there are many, as even in mood disorders. And this is where we have quite a, a significant uh, uh, challenges because they actually mimic the physical illnesses. Research has shown that 30 to 40 percent of people seeking help uh, who are coming with health problems, especially in the primary health care setting, they are actually suffering from anxiety disorders because the majority of them will present with even headache, fever, you know, shivering, uh, palpitations, that is, the, the heart beats very fast. Uh, some uh, features of a high sympathetic output. And what happens is that because this uh, uh, is mimics actually the, the physical ailments like malaria, typhoid, and all those, you'll find that most of them are misdiagnosed or missed out. I had mentioned about the investigations of uh, these physical illnesses. So somebody investigates, especially in the western part where there's a lot of malaria, and when you cannot pick those parasites, you say maybe it is in the liver and you are given medicine. You go home, you don't change, you come back. Maybe it is typhoid, so you are given the typhoid. Until there's others which are called brucellosis and all those things. People have been treated severely because of anxiety disorders. I said about 40% of those clients suffer from uh, anxiety disorders. Uh, among those ones, we find that uh, there is one which is very common and uh, which can be very, very uh, dramatic, if I may use that word, something called panic disorder. A panic attack is a state where somebody feels like he's actually dying, and I always say they die for 10 minutes. What happens? They, they have decreased uh, air, they are yearning for air, chest pain, they have uh, palpitations, the heart is beating and they will tell you I am holding it so that it, does, it doesn't come out. The person is sweating and for sure the person feels like he's actually breathing his last breath. Many at times they will be rushed to hospital. Unfortunately, before you reach the hospital, the attack is over. So you are actually in the hospital and you are really trying to convince the doctor that, doctor, I was dying. Now, what was the problem? And unfortunately, many at times when the vital signs are taken, everything is fine. Then the doctor looks at you and said, are you for real? And imagine now the relative, the person who has brought you to hospital, will look at you and say, were you pretending? Those things are real, and they're usually very bad, and we need to understand. But at least many people now are trying to appreciate that that is a panic attack, and sometimes we even can, act, if you are aware of it, you can manage it even at home, by doing very simple exercises called relaxation, as long as you are somebody, you have somebody who is reassuring. 
anxiety disorders. The next one is schizophrenia, and this is what we refer as psychosis. Not other psychiatric disorder, but it's supposed to be schizophrenia and other psychotic disorders. This is what mental health, many people think it is. The madness, that is what we call it. We don't call it madness, we call it schizophrenia or psychotic disorders. And they are mainly characterized by people, actually they are out of touch with reality. They don't know where they are, and one of the commonest uh, presentations is also hallucinations, where you have hallucinations in any of the senses, the five senses. One can feel, and you see them picking, actually, insects on, the, on, the, on, on their skin, and you look carefully, there's nothing. And they really pick them. Somebody will tell you this, this food actually is smelling soap. Why did you put food, uh, soap in the, in the food? And yet you, you are testing the same food and you can't uh, test anything. The smell, the taste, the feel, the sight, and the hearing. What is most common is actually the hearing. We call them auditory hallucinations, where people would be responding to non-existent voices or answering things that you have not asked them. But indeed, they hear them, and that is one of the needs. The, the schizophrenia has a, has a specific way of diagnosis, which you call Schneiders. It's not important for us to know. After all, I'm only creating awareness. I'm not making psychiatrists. So be aware of that, but that is what we know. These are conditions which can be managed. Unfortunately, the extreme ones are very, they respond to medication poorly, and these are the people you find being in the, in the streets, in the, in, the, in, the, in, in, the, in the markets, and we refer them as chronic schizophrenics. Those ones sometimes, because they have not been treated, because they have resistant, there is resistance to treatment, or people have just given up and said, this cannot be treated. But I want to tell you that well treated and closely followed, they can be actually rehabilitated to be able to do at least something or even be able to be productive. But many at times, they are left out. The next one is what you call somatoform disorders. Soma means body, and therefore these are diseases that present with the physical symptoms, but they, are, they, they, they don't originate from the body. They are not physical. They are from the, the mind, but they are presenting physically. The main ones are, there's what you call hypochondriosis, and that is a disease where we always, we sometimes we use refer them to the diseases of medical students, because every time you are thought of a disease, you feel like you are actually having it. So, and uh, you go home and you say, I think that, that one I know I have it. There is another one we used to refer as hysteria, but nowadays it's called conversion and need disorder because it is the psychic conflict that are converted to the physical form so that they can be addressed. And I think some of the things we have seen, they can present with even paralysis where somebody cannot even respond even if you burn the person, and yet there is no problem with the nerves. I think we all saw what was happening in the reg uh, in the, uh, girls, and when they went to Cambridge, there was nothing that was found in blood. So it can be that dramatic and extreme. I have seen people with convulsions. You see the way you think it's epilepsy, but they don't meet the classical, and they don't respond to the medications for epilepsy. So we call them pseudo seizures, and they, but you look at them, you can think actually somebody's having epilepsy. Of course, the other uh, symptoms would include even headache, abdominal pain, uh, anything, back aches, and all those things. But the problem is not at the back. It, the problem is in the mind, yet the signs and symptoms are physical. We have eating disorders. Maybe some of you have known about these ones. And this is mostly because of the way we have actually um, uh, sometimes we read to our children, you know, you hear people talking about you and Chuck Nono and all that. Those ones, the mind does not take it kindly. They go and uh, actually affect these children or these people. And in, their, in themselves, whenever they look at the, the mirror, they see themselves so big and therefore they will eat and go and induce vomiting. They are usually very anorexic, very thin, and actually they are fatal diseases because you might find an adult weighing as, lo as little as 30 kgs. They don't eat, and whenever they eat, they actually belch. 
it's not their wish, but it is something that is, is because of the mind that has really uh, induced that kind of uh, uh, behavior. There are, we are two main ones called anorexia nervosa and bulimia. We have other group of called delirium, dementia, and amnestic cognitive disorders. This is actually where mostly for the, the old, but it can also be as a result of chronic medical conditions, depending on which one. We have seen it in some diseases, for example, HIV, where you have the psychiatric manifestations of the HIV AIDS disease, but it is very common in old age, I think you've had dementia. There's a special dementia called Alzheimer's. This one can affect even young, young age because it is, uh, it is, it, it is, uh, uh, it, it, it's, uh, it's, uh, it, it is not necessarily uh, an old age disease. Uh, the main symptoms of this is mainly forgetting and uh, also, yeah, forgetting and of course, uh, uh, Motor, uh, motor aspect where people are slowed in terms of in, in, in what they are doing. The, la the, la the second last, the mental illness is due to chronic medical conditions. This, I think I say that uh, sometimes when somebody has been sick for a very long time, we always miss out the, uh, the mental health aspect. Chronic diseases will include cancer, hypertension, even diabetes, uh, some of the, maybe the endocrine diseases, almost always you find that they are actually associated with the mental aspect. They can have depression, they can be associated with anxiety, they can also present with those somatoform disorders, but their origin is mental, is medical condition. Some conditions like thyroid, uh, uh, hypothyroidism is associated with, uh, with depression, and uh, also, we know that in some, some, some conditions, for example, even uh, uh, the hormone-based hormone conditions can also present with, the, with the mental disorders. There's one that I've left there, sorry, substance abuse. Substance abuse can induce any of those. And that is how bad it is. I was talking to a patient this morning, and she's telling me, yeah, she doesn't know what started first, whether it was the depression or alcoholism. And she has really battled with all of them. Sometimes you st she stops the, the drug so that she can now deal with the alcohol. And then, of course, because sometimes we tell them you cannot take the two. So these things, sometimes you may find that somebody is developing mental illnesses when they lay their hands on substances, they use it for self-medication. And in that way now, you may always want to blame the substance, yet the person maybe had anxiety. There are people who take drugs to be actually confident. You know, there are people who cannot stand before, but when they have taken something, then you find that they are really on top of things. So that one, you find that there is something that is underlying. They are using a substance to treat. Unfortunately, as that continues, you find that the person now gets a double the, the diagnosis whereby it's this addiction and the disease which he was in quotes treating, but of course it was not treating. Allow me to look at personality disorders, which is really the elephant in the house. Many at times we are, we are not very serious about it, we don't even know, but, it, but sporadically you hear people talk about I think my husband is a narcissist. I think, my hus I, I think you have heard about that. I think that one is a, man, is, 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 is a personality disorder, but we don't know which one. Allow me to take you through, yes. Personality disorders, these are pervasive, enduring patterns of behavior. They start as traits. Traits is things that you actually, you grow with them, they are not they are not really bothering you, but with time, when now they are, they've matured, they become now disorders. Mainly the patterns of thinking, perceiving, reacting, and relating. You can see these are things that make relationship, or which actually hold relationship. So if you have a pattern that is pervasive, and in terms of thinking, perceiving, reacting, and relating, then things are not going to be as usual. So they cause 
By the time we are talking about a personality disorder, it means they have reached a state whereby they have caused significant distress and with functional impairment. Some personality disorders cannot even allow you to continue with work because you cannot even relate with your colleagues. Leave alone being a family man or a family person or as a child who is obedient. So, uh, this, the cause is a combination of genetic and environmental factors that interact. So you can see, if it is genetic, then it is not somebody's fault, and it's not something that you can switch on, switch off. And that is why it is so tough, and somebody says, why can't you change? I just want you to change your behavior. Excuse me, it is beyond the behavior because there is a genetic component in it. It's good to know that these particular personal disorders are severe during the young age. They start around adolescent, but as you grow old, you might find it less. So for those who have gone through that middle age and all that, you can actually be excited that things may not be that bad after all. But are we able to stand during that time when it is at the peak? Statistics show us that 9% of the population, the general population, that is not a small percentage, have these personality disorders. But when you come to the, the, the diagnosed mental illnesses that I've shown, they actually go up to 50%. So sometimes even in the very, very good experts, you may not be able to differentiate between the, now the disorders and the personal disorder because the management is different. So it goes up to 50% uh, of those ones. There is no clear, and this is interesting, there is no clear distinction in terms of sex, socioeconomic, status, and even race. So anybody can suffer from personality disorders, including the professionals, including the pastors. Sadly, you know, sometimes I get, you know, when you are interacting, there are even some pastors who have these personality disorders and therefore the shepherdesses are in trouble because they are supposed to be straight. They are supposed to be smart. And you look at it and say, pastor, are you really pastor? Hello, it is not about pastor because they don't, uh, they don't miss out. They, they don't, uh, they don't, uh, they are not clear, they, they don't respect any race, any profession, or socioeconomic. I can see time is not there, but uh, we can continue with this one because this is, I'm very passionate because if I cannot tell you anything, please let me tell you about personal disorders because men families are suffering. Most of the divorces are actually due to those differences and we are not aware. And when I finish, I'll be able to tell you that uh, if I was given a chance, I would say, like the way we said, that before you are actually united, can you go for a HIV test? Maybe going forward, we might be going for personality tests before we can combine so that you know where you are entering. Hello? May God bless us because tomorrow we'll pick up from there and also look at the topic for tomorrow. Because indeed, it is important to understand personal disorders because they direct, you know, it has been demonstrated that the direct cost in terms of, you know, family and everything in terms of even treatment, the cost, the ones which are direct are indirectly. In terms of productivity at work and everything, it is much more than the other conditions that I've talked about. And that is why I'm saying I really want to really dive deeper to the personal disorders and maybe at the end of it all, you'll be able to diagnose yourself whether you have one. May God help us so that tomorrow we'll be ready to see which one is yours. I'm going to say the types, and you are the only one who will be ticking and saying, that is me. May God bless you. Let's pray. Gracious Father, God of gods and the King of kings, we give you glory and honor for who you are and what you want to tell us this moment. We thank you for this session that you have taken us through, Lord, even as we continue to learn more so that, my Father, we can be from the point of knowledge and understanding to be able to help ourselves and even those around us. Thank you because of this as we continue to be with us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.